Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at deep engraving brass coins. And we're gonna be using the X-Tool F1 Ultra to create a magnificent coin like this. Now I'm gonna share with you five steps, that's all it takes, five steps to be able to create a coin like this. And I'm gonna give you one secret step, something that no one's talking about on how you can clean this coin up after you do your engrave so that you could get the best results as well. So let's get right to it. Now the X-Tool F1 Ultra makes creating Challenger coins like this super easy. It's one of the easiest lasers I found when making a Challenger coin, but you do have to have a couple things in order to get the best results. And first, you have to start with the right material. Let's take a look at this coin. So this coin right here is a full brass coin. And you can have brass coins, you can have aluminum coins, you can have nickel coins, stainless steel coins. There's a lot of different types of materials. And there's also coins that come in combos, uh, different type of material combinations. In other words, you could find a coin that is brass plated, but is not full brass. And that's gonna change the effect that you're gonna get when you do it engrave. So take a look at this one right here, and you'll notice this right here. This coin right here is a full brass coin. Now, there's no patina, so you can see that it's just, it's just shiny. And when I engraved this on the X-Tool F1 Ultra, all I did is I took a Scott, um, I would say a bright uh, scrubber, and I scrubbed it clean. You could also do steel wool uh, and, and cleaned it up. That's all I did to this. You could add a patina to it, and there's chemicals that you can use to do this and other processes that you can do to get it to look a little bit brownish, right? But what you're seeing here is how it comes off of the machine once it's been cleaned. Now this is full brass, so you can see that it's brass all the way down, and you can see the detail that's there. Now I'm gonna show you another option. And oh, by the way, let me flip this over. This is what the coin started out like, right? So this is what you end up with. Now this coin right here that I'm gonna bring in, uh, this is a coin that has a copper plate, but it's not 100% copper. And look at the effect that you get right here. Now check this out. Now this isn't a bad looking coin in any, in any stretch, right? But you'll notice that if you're looking to get a 100% um, copper finish, or in this case, brass finish, if you wanna have a 100% brass finish, you need to make sure that you have a coin that is fully brass based. So here you'll notice, I basically have the gold color, right? The brass color here on top. And then I have this uh, metal, a uh, different type of metal underneath because of the uh, plating that it took place. So that's another coin that you can consider. Now the other type of coin is something like this. This is a steel coin. And this is another great option as a challenger coin. But the one thing about this is that this is gonna require a little bit more passes in my experience. So take a look at how this one turned out. And you'll notice that there's stuff here. This is an inspiration coin that I created uh, for a D&D game. And I'm making this for my son, and you'll notice that I still have to do another pass on this. So this is one of my tests. And as you see here, the, I lo the castle, I have a castle in the background, it's somewhat present, but not 100% present. And then you'll notice that it says inspiration, and there's some detail here. Uh, these two coins basically had the same power level run on each of them, but one came out a lot deeper because of the material type, than the other. So you're gonna to have to experiment, do material tests to get the right experience as you're going through this. But I'm gonna give you my starter settings in the video so that you could get at least this if you choose brass, a brass coin, and you should see the exact same results. But once again, you're gonna to have to test. Now, the other thing I did with this one and with this one is that once I did the engrave, I did a clean, uh, in, uh, I would say, pass, and that removed a lot of the dirt, the material that was still on, on there because of the engraves, and it gave me somewhat of a polish. Not a super polish, but it gave me somewhat of a polish. Now before processing an image, I'm just gonna give you some tips, uh, some steps that I typically go through, is just preparing my canvas. So the first thing I have here is you notice I have a circle. Make sure that your circle is perfectly circled, if that's even the right word. So notice right here my size. 29.14, 29.14. This is what works for me based on the coin size that I have. So I wanna make sure that these are not off and you wanna make sure that they will size accordingly. The second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get some images. Now, these are images uh, that I've created using um, an AI and there's a lot of different ways that you can get these images. So sourcing your images is something that you can uh, check on the internet or use even Xtools um, image generator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into this art mind right here tool and we're going to choose embossment 
Now you're going to see that I have a series of images that I've already worked with that will show up here in a couple seconds uh, that I've already loaded. But let me show you what the process is um, in this area. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to choose the image that you're going to upload or you're going to generate one based on keywords using the AI. Now this is an image that I generated that I'm going to be um, engraving or embossing on a coin. I have the dragon that you saw on one side and I'm going to be putting this wolf on the other side. Uh, so. Uh, what I'll, all I'll have to do is choose OK, and then it is going to load the image here. Now, what I can then do is hit Generate. You will need some Xtool coins in order to do this. And typically, by opening up an account on Xtool, registering yourself, you're going to probably have coins already. If you purchased um, a laser, you will have coins already. So uh, you'll have something there that you'll be able to work with. And then what you do is generate. There's nothing that you'll enter here. All you'll do is generate. Now, once the image has been processed, you're going to get a result like this. And you'll notice that I have here some coins that I've been working on already. And these are all that I've either generated via AI or I've created um, using uh, the Xtool tool. Now, what you could do is you can either download this to save this, you can import it into your canvas, or you can even look at it. What does it look like in this 3D render? So this is what this coin is going to look like once, once it's embossed. And if you were to do this, for example, even on a slate, you could get some really cool effects as you can see right here. So see how neat that looks? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to close this out and I'm going to choose import into canvas. So as I choose import to canvas, I'm going to say yes to scale to fit. And here we have a coin now. Now here's a trick. One of the things that I found is when if you haven't purchased an image or you're generating your image is sometimes the circle isn't perfect. And that's kind of, you know, it's a pain, right? Dealing with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this down. And, you know, again, you'll notice as, as it's resizing, it's resizing down to a size where it's uh, the size here. You'll notice 84.3, 84.3. It's locked down because I don't want it to lose its perspective um, or its dimension, right? I don't want it to get distorted. So I have it next to this guy. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, right, just to show you what I'm going to be doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this because uh, this is my... My, my circle that I'm going to use. And as I zoom into this, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically size this image to fit inside of that circle. And you're going to see why. So, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get, make sure that the circle that I get is going to be just like the coin itself. So I'll basically adjust it a little bit to where I want it to be and make sure it's not cutting off anything. That kind of looks really good there. So, and I'm not worried about this outer area. I'm kind of looking at what's going on in here, making sure that things look good, right? And I think they do. So the next step is this. You're gonna select them both, right click, and then watch this. You're gonna say, create a mask. Watch what's gonna happen. Boom. And now I'm gonna say, done. And now I have a nice circle. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scroll out a little bit or zoom out. And this, for example, is, is something that I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. So what I'll do is I'm going to use this as my frame for my coin because this is a nice clean circle. There's no distortion. There's nothing I have to worry about. So I'll basically um, refresh uh, with this button uh, to my F1 Ultra. And then I'll align this on the coin perfectly. Once I have this aligned on the coin, I do two things. I do do a visual alignment, so I see the coin in the background, and I'll basically use the F1 Ultra's camera to do that. But then what I like doing is I like coming over here, choosing outline, and then I'll choose the frame. And that's going to give me that blue line going around the coin. This, to me, is a trusted, tried, and true way to make sure that the coin is perfectly aligned. Right. So once I have that aligned, my next step is to take this guy right here and to place them right in here. And you'll notice that as soon as you move them, let me show you that again. You notice how it has the crosshairs? Those crosshairs are telling me that that's perfectly centered inside of that coin circle that I created. Now, once you've done that, the next thing is to set the parameters, right? So I'm going to open up my easy panel. A couple things that you're going to notice. First of all, I have emboss selected. So if you have from a processing type, let's go ahead and go over here for a second. You basically have process on flat surfaces, use rotary attachment, conveyor, right? 
and then uh, the conveyor large, right? So there's some things that you can do right here. And then you have embossment. So you want to choose that. Now, once you've chosen that, you're going to use these settings. Now, I've created some user-defined settings, and I've created two settings, one that I call a clean pass and one that I call an emboss. And so I'm going to choose this one, and you're going to see my settings here. Now, I've been experimenting with different settings, and uh, here's one setting that I've been trying. And here is the number of layers, set it to 256. Your power, you can do 95 or 100, depending on your material, right? You're going to have to experiment. Speed, um, I've done 500 to 750. I have this one right now at 500. One pass, 300 um, lines per centimeter. Uh, the engraving angle is at 15. This is kind of default. I haven't changed this. And then I have descend, the Z axis, and it's going to descend for every N layer. So this is the number of layers. For every layer, 256 is going to do a descent. And then basically, this is going to give you really nice deep engrave. This is going to give you a really nice deep engrave, right? So that's, that's the setting that I'll do. And then once I run this, this is going to take about two and a half hours, maybe almost three hours. It does take a long time. I would not run a emboss inside of a home unless you have a really good filtration system or you're going to be using um, some form of extractor to get this out because this, this creates a lot of dust. All right, so once you've run your engrave, the next step is to do a clean pass. I'll show you what I have for clean. And I've done a couple things. Uh, one of the things that I've done, I'll show you one thing, is I've basically taken this thing right here. Um, I've changed it to an engrave. And then I have um, then done basically change the fiber to fiber. And I've increased the frequency to 60. And I did a really fast uh, pass. So you can experiment with some of these numbers, right? So I increase this guy and then I made I made this like a um, thousand five thousand six thousand the one thing you want to be very, very careful is when you're doing any type of cleaning is that you could darken the metal and the whole point of a clean pass is to really it's more about lightening the metal so you have to be careful and you have to experiment so uh, one preferred way and I'm gonna go ahead and undo what I just did here to show you one option is to just take the same image that you have and then change the the actual, um, I would say, parameters. So here's my clean pass. So you notice my clean pass, same power, right? But now I have a crazy amount of speed. I've maxed it out. And everything else stays the same, and I'll run this uh, so that it can clean it up. So that's my clean, or that's a clean option, and then the engrave option. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.